Hey y'all, welcome back to Chris's Kitchen and Happy New Year. Um, so to get things started off right, in the South we always have to have black eyed peas and cabbage. So I'm going to show y'all how to make some black eyed peas very quickly in a pressure cooker. Um, I feel like last year or maybe even the year before was the year of the pressure cooker and I'm just kind of slow to get on this little train and this year I really feel like it's going to be like the year of the air fryer. Um, but I wanted to show y'all how if you don't have a lot of time or you waited to the last minute how you can make your black eyed peas and have them on the table and not have anybody know that you didn't spend hours cooking them. The pressure cooker is going to speed things up a ton. So what I did do is this is just one bag of black eyed peas. I rinsed them and then let them soak overnight um, per the package directions. So I did get a little head start with some of this. Uh, that'd be best if you could do that as well or you could do a um, quick hot soak with some boiling water for that first little bit and let them really soften up those the outer shell but we're gonna and it's very simple just a few ingredients to get this going so have our pressure cooker and this is a ninja foodie it has a pressure cooker function but this will work on your instapot or whatever style pressure cooker you have as well so we just have one pound bag of black eyed peas and they're in the water. So the water they soaked in, I drained that off and just put some fresh water in for um, the new and while we're doing this. So we're just gonna pour our beans in. And with the pressure cooker, you don't need a whole lot of excess water. We do want enough water in them that they'll um, absorb it and soak it all up but you don't have to have a ton of excess. Then I have some smoked ham hocks or pork hocks, however you like to call it. And these are nice and meaty, which is the kind I like because I like those meaty bits in mine. But these have a lot of salt and a lot of flavor to them. So we're just gonna kind of bury these down in here. And then I'm gonna toss in one whole yellow onion that I've just kind of roughly chopped up. And this is going to break down a lot. So you don't have to, it doesn't have to be perfect. Then I'm going to use about a tablespoon of garlic powder, not garlic salt. The ham hocks are going to have a ton of salt in them already so I wait to add any extra salt until the very end to taste. Plus I use a chicken bouillon base for mine and that has a ton of salt also. And y'all know I love my garlic so if you don't want quite as much garlic in yours that's okay. There we go. And then the last ingredient for now is our chicken base. If you don't have chicken base and you want, you can use about one or two um, bouillon cubes will work also. So I'm just using about a large tablespoon of the bouillon base. I've told y'all before how much I love this bouillon base. It's convenient, stays in the fridge, and it just works out perfect. Now if you don't have bouillon cubes or bouillon base, but you still want to do this, Substitute some of your water for chicken broth and that will help with some of the flavoring also. But you want to make sure your flavoring is in your water or your broth so that um, you really get those, those peas seasoned. So I'm just flipping these over, stirring that base all around. Now I don't want a ton of extra water. The water that we started with um, was just for what was bare, just, just slightly over covering the peas after they had soaked. And now I'm just going to add in enough water to cover everything again now that we added some extra ingredients. So I did go ahead and measure it out so I can give y'all an approximate idea of how much water we're going to add in. So let's see. We started, this was four cups. So right at about two cups to cover everything. And now this is the lid for my to the pressure cooker function. Okay, put it on. Sorry, I'm doing it backwards. So we're going to set it to ceiling. And then 
We're going to turn it on. And we're going to go pressure setting. It automatically will select high, which is what we want. And we're going to set it for 30 minutes. And hit start. It's going to take some time to come up to pressure. And then it'll cook. We'll do a quick release and check on it and see if we need to cook it any longer. Again, I usually cook this on the stove top, so we're kind of playing with things today to see um, how long this is going to take. But I'm thinking 30 minutes will be perfect. If anything, um, we may need just a little bit longer for that ham hock to kind of make it fall off the bone. But we'll check on it in 30 minutes and see where we stand. I'll see y'all back soon. Okay, y'all, so we're 30 minutes later and our black eyes are all finished. I did go ahead and vent them. We're going to open them up and see what we need. Um, like always, usually I have to add some extra salt. So I have my favorite Lowry's next to me. You can use regular salt or a different kind of seasoned salt if you like. But um, we'll see if we need to add a little bit more garlic. I know I almost always need to add a little more salt. Um, but I just, I would rather add the salt at the end when it needs it than over salt it especially with those um, smoked ham hocks. You never know how salty those are going to be. So, let's see where we're at. And let's get this all mixed around. So our peas feel nice and soft, and our meat's pulling away from the bone. Um, like I expected, um, these ham hocks probably could cook a little bit longer in it, but I usually just mostly use them for the flavor and some of these little bits of meat that's already coming off. So I'm okay with um, it being in there as it is. If you want, you can cook them ahead of time. And look, we've got some little meat pieces that have already fallen off. Those are like the little gems in the peas. But let's pull a little bit out and see where we're at. So it's going to be piping hot, but obviously. We need a lot more salt. So we're going to add a little bit at a time. Um, and really, that's probably all we need. So just salt to taste. And like I said, um, go on the lighter side first. Mm. I'm going to buy some more Lowry's. Go on the lighter side first because you can always add more to it. You can't take it away. Or there are some tips and tricks to help some of this pull some of the salt out, but it's difficult and it doesn't always take it all out. So let's see. I'm gonna mix this around. And don't worry, it's just my family that's eating this. So yes, I know I lift off the spoon and put it back in here. If they don't want to eat after me, then they're just not gonna eat. Um, <laughs> but they're all used to me doing this. That's why that's all that I had in the Lowry's. It was, I just knew that was the perfect amount that I needed. But this is ready. We're going to cover this up and let it sit. And we're going to move on to our collard greens. And cabbage and cornbread and all of that. But hopefully this helps you get some black eyed peas made quickly. Um, again, this was the first time doing it in the pressure cooker. And it worked out fabulous. This may be my go-to. Probably will be my go-to way. Of doing it from now on. Next time I may, I'll probably do these ham hocks a little bit on their own first. I'll kind of make that decision after I get some of these pieces pulled off and see how well the meat pulls away, but I'll let y'all know in the description. But next time I might cook these for about 15-20 minutes before I throw the beans and everything in. It will make it an extra process, but it pulls that meat away and adds all the little bits of joy to this. So hopefully you give it a try. Tell me if you add anything extra to yours. Um, I know a lot of people add hot sauce to theirs also. I don't because I like that spice in my collard greens. 
but y'all have a good new year and hopefully this is the great start to your 2021. See y'all next time. Bye.